Hello and welcome to Cannabis Talk 101, the world's number one source for everything cannabis. My name's Blue, alongside me, Mr. Joe Grande, and we are back on set. It feels good, man. How you doing, baby? It does feel great, brother. Good to be here and good to be here with some other cool cats on the show as well. Thank you for listening to our podcast, Cannabis Talk 101, all around the world. Make sure you check out our website, CannabisTalk101.com, as we are the world's number one source for everything cannabis. There's so many great articles and blogs on the site, and you could also click that link so you can go check out our magazine. Feel free to give us a call anytime time 1-800-420-1980 and check out the ig pages at cannabis talk 101 my brother blue right here is at the number one christopher Wright. Hello. i am at joe grande 52 and when it comes to something typical you guys you want to make it something special well you got to get that infused products and the flavor you taste should be just as enjoyable as the feeling you experience visit the website loranoils.com now these next two guests we have on the show today are special in so many ways in a sense that their past work has touched millions of hearts and dance floors and everything else and continues to provide motivation and means of escape through their raw entertainment we have fatal in the building baby what's up brother how you what's doing what's up joe what's up man good to have yeah. you man the ceo of frenzy broadcasting and radio personality on the after party radio show which can be heard in northern cali on rhythm 105.9 fm in kansas on jams 99.3 fm or in nebraska on hits 90.5 fm be sure to check out all of his content and music on frenzybroadcasting.com follow him on ig at fatal official to be in the mix with the latest projects that Fado is dropping Fidel. right there. Fidel, Fidel, thank you, Fidel, my Fatel. bad. Fatel, Fatel, like, like, Fatel. Fatel. like fatality, Mortal exactly. Kombat. Fatel. Uh, Fatel. Get over here. Fatel, you know what you can, what you can. You can. Hey, you have the best energy, I love that, man. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for the warm welcome. No, Joe. thank you, brother. Give him a little warm welcome, yeah, you guys, right there. Yeah, Slap yeah, him there down. But oh. besides him, oh, we got oh. the man, the myth, the legend that's created a lane for himself in an era of hip hop where you said and stood for actually what mattered. You guys, uh, true shit came out of his mouth, and you better believe that he cemented his glory as one of the original members of the Outlaws, founded in the late great Tupac Shakur, right there. Famously penned the fifth verse of what could debatably be the best diss track of all time. Yeah. Hit him up, motherfucker. Yeah. Uh! Also, debatably. the owner. Up. Exactly. Uh, the founder of the popular podcast, The Outlaw Show. If you don't know, act like you know now. The legendary icon is in the building, folks. Give it up for EDI Means. Nice. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what warm the fuck welcome I'm about. for these guys. That's how right you do here. an intro right there. Yeah, man. That's what the fuck I'm talking about. Right like here. That? You could have kept going if you wanted to. I mean, man. I probably could have. You know what I could have kept going. Man, look go. here. Look, I ain't got nothing planned. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get Let some me more back search and down. Take that a little yeah, longer. and it's so funny because in, at the beginning, I'd already done two shows when you guys sat down. Pardon my ignorance when you said I should have worn my necklace because. I'm two yeah, shows was, back of you coming mind. out with, you know, you said I should have worn my necklace and I'm like, who's sitting down <laughs> next to me right now because I'm still editing some shit from the last show that I didn't even realize. So my apologies for my ignorance when you walked up, my brother. Your apologies behind accepted, the, behind but I want to let you know I didn't take it. I didn't, well, I no, it was, I wasn't offended at all. Well, I am. I'm offended of myself. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, how the fuck Outlaws. did I just slip on this motherfucker right here walking up in here? But when I'm literally on another screen opening up, but I, I knew you guys were up here, so I wanted to introduce myself and say hello. No, officially. You know what I mean? To, to make sure I moved on like that. For those that are listening, we just do shows back to back in this building. <laughs> and uh, you know what I mean? And we already had so many different random eclectic folks. But welcome to the show, you guys. Thanks it's good to have you, man. Thanks, yeah. You know, let's break this Pleasure's down. Let's start mind. with this Outlaws, man. Where you got, where, where did you come from? Where, where, where did you grow up exactly and everything else, EDI? Man, I moved around a lot, man, but I started in New York City, Brooklyn. Oh, like, really? Yeah, a little town called Coney Island. And yes. so that's where well it all started known. for me Coney, on the huh? East Coast. And then I migrated. Nice. When yeah. did you come to L.A.? Came to L.A. around the early 90s. Nice. Early oh, 90s. Oh, so that, and that's when you right away hooked up, right away with Death Row and Pac? And how did you nah, get nah, that, that connection? Nah, that, 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 that's, that started when we were kids. Yeah, me and Pac were childhood friends and some of the other outlaws. You know, you know... Um, I was at Death Row in the, in the 90s, so I was there, you know, when you guys were there. And um, you probably wouldn't recognize me, you know, but... Uh, I never forget a face, so... Yeah, when we I saw, saw you, each other, we were like, oh, we, yeah, we, we both looked at each other like, we know each other. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I, I was uh, really close with Psych, you know, rest in peace, Big Psych, man. R.I.P. Big Psych, yes, Yeah, indeed. and that was a shock to me, you know, because I always felt like he was healthy, you know what I mean? He just looked mm -hmm. like a healthy dude and, and everything, and... 
Um, but I, I got to spend a little, a little time with him throughout the years. And, and you know, he, he uh, you know, I'd say mentored me in some things, you know, throughout the past because, uh, you know, just on how to act in, in certain areas and, and to do things because he had a way about moving, you nice. know. and um, Absolutely. So, you know, I'm I, I, a uh, big fan of the Outlaws myself, you know. Um, so tell me how the Outlaws actually became about, like, like, you know, who created the Outlaws? I mean, did you just come up with it? Was I mean, it- we kind of all knew each other from different, you know, parts of uh, uh, life. Some of us were from Jersey. Some of us were from New York City. The late, great killer Gaddafi went to high school yeah, and yeah. grew up with a lot of the, the other members in the group. And then me, Gaddafi, Castro, Pac, we all grew up together. Nice. Yeah. 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 And then, and then, so what was your first record with the Outlaws? Probably, uh, that's, that's a great question, man. You're talking about over 20... Fucking years. And Makes I smoke, you really think. I smoke a lot of weed. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to bring it back. News flash. I smoke a lot of weed. <laughs> the light went up. Maybe yeah, maybe it'll smoke up. A, I don't know, man. Let's get one of the fans to Google that shit or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't fucking remember what the first song how about, was. How about what's man. the most memorable song that you mm-hmm. that done? I think Made Niggas. Okay. This was probably the most memorable. That session was pretty epic. Nice. Who was why? It? Who was why was it so epic? Yeah. Because I got to watch it. If you ever heard Made Niggas, it's a it's like a piano riff that goes through the whole song, like on some classical shit. And the guy who did did it is a guy by the name of, uh, I don't want to fuck his name up, Ronnie King. Ronnie King. Actually, you can follow him on Instagram. Great piano player. He played that shit for six minutes without fucking up one time. Wow. And I watched it. This is before Pro Tools where you can loop yeah, real real. You can you really can just it was real to real. some shit. It was, it was like, real to real. No, because style, when yeah. you had reels, you had to do it right or you had to stop and cut and it, cut the tape. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and at, at boys Can-Am, and girls, this at, was in the this was in the dark ages. At, well, at Can Am, and that's when before we were before electricity. And shit, yeah, you know at Can Am, it was real to real in the beginning, you yeah, know, and then yeah. it was just converting over towards the end. But I mean, in yeah. the beginning, every there was reels everywhere, you know. Yep. The, you had the machines there, everybody's cutting tapes, and everybody's just like, and that's why you know a lot of people are like, you know, wh- wh- where's the music at? And I'm like, it ain't like you know, it's so hard to find it. Because it's on, you know, someone's got it in their in their home on a reel. It ain't on uploaded to the cloud. It's not, you know, <laughs> one of you these know. things right here. Yes. Like, that was How actual, ironically, that look was at an this. Actual master I have the, the I have day, a picture that. of me yeah. and my boy having in the studio reel with some reels. So right you there. remember how heavy those motherfuckers? Oh, not yeah. only how heavy. Right. I did my first commercial. My boy let me do a commercial. I didn't realize you have to transfer the reel at the fir- beginning of it to a new reel, <laughs> oh. then to take it back and put it to the beginning of a reel, right? So I was like, my first commercial I ever cut, he let me fuck it up, do the whole eight track, and then <laughs> ha, 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 I had to redo the whole fucking commercial. Yeah. I'm like, you, but hey, I'll never <laughs> forgot. That's what you have to do on a reel. Yeah. You have, on a brand new one, you got to You got to transfer yeah. it first before you start recording on it. Yeah, so That's that was crazy. pretty... That was just pretty epic to see him do that. Yeah. For six minutes and not that's, fuck up. That's tough. You know what I mean? And then we went and killed it. Nice, man. Yeah. So so the history, the history um, you know, that you guys have, you know, in in, in my era, I believe that, you know, it, it was such a big movement. You know, every, if you didn't know who the outlaws were, you didn't you know, it was You weren't just, really down with hip hop at that point. You weren't really down with hip hop, yeah. And it was just such a and it was and it was like it was like the it was like you know, obviously Pac, you know, had such a, a an influence on on the world, you know, but the Outlaws were like that that team that was right there, just right in your face. Every other record coming out, and then the songs behind them, and like you said, you know, the Hit 'Em Up record, you know, there was some of the biggest diss records. for you to get on that one. I mean, how did that even come about? How, how did you get to score? Because that's iconic. Yeah, I mean, shit, that that was just another day in, at the office for us. <laughs> You know what I mean? It and was did just you a, say like I, I got we did like for three it. other records that day. You know what I'm saying? So it was just it was just another record, just popping them out. And then, but it happened to be a pretty, you know, a pretty notorious one. Yeah, no oh. pun intended. It was. <laughs> it <laughs> it's really ironic was. that you say it that way. Oh, yeah. It really was. Well, and 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 so did you have a relationship with Big? Absolutely. Yeah, and that's why I asked because I mean, obviously, you're you were from you know Coney Island and then you know New York area, yeah. you know, and then you're coming back to the West Coast. So yeah, you, I knew Big because he was tight with Pop. Yeah, you know they were I mean? friends and before. I met Little C's and his crew, and you know what I mean. That's we what were, we were all tight at one point. Well, in, in your opinion, I think this is something that you know it, the whole world would you know want to know is, you know, was that the West East Coast West Coast beef? Was that a was that you know something that was real or do you feel like the media really built that up and 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 made that happen i mean you know like 
I just think it was a lot of, you know, um, a lot of overblown egos, and including in the, the individual crews and the media. Sure. Yeah, everybody played a part in that shit. Yeah, everybody had their own little I side. I as well said right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did too. Yeah. And, and and what what about today? You know, like if you had, you know, some of these guys are still around. You know, is there is there still animosity, or does everybody kind of look past it? You know, how do you feel? Lil C's is my guy. Yeah, you know what I mean. Crazy. We've done music with Lil C's. We've got videos you can go check out. Rest in peace to K Slay, the great Rest in peace. the great K Slay, the drama king, because he was instrumental, and in, you know, kind of calming a lot of this shit that was still going on. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's I want to get Lil C's in here, man. I I don't I had the opportunity to uh, smoke and kick it with Biggie three days before he passed. Me, him, and Lil C's listened to his whole album in San Francisco together, and we were smoking when they came down. We did the last interview with Biggie mm -hmm. uh, at Wild 94.9, the station I was at, and that's the same interview that Puff plays everywhere and anywhere. And I actually met uh, Biggie's son, and I gave him a picture that you know I took with his dad, and nice. it was crazy that he goes, oh my God, I still have that T-shirt that my dad was wearing in that picture. Yeah. So, wow. you yeah. know what I mean? So it was, he, it was he pretty He damn near dope. almost cried on the show. Yeah. I mean, he but saw my that. my point like, is, Whoa. I ain't seen C since that day to where if I see him, I'll be like, dog, you remember me? I had purple hair at that fucking time. But you know what I mean? I was crazy looking silver but front tube nose radio ring. Show on, in but he, I, I guarantee he's going to remember because it was when he was in San Francisco and he came to the morning show. And when Big came up, I gave him some weed and we kicked it. And then I came to the party that was at BMG over there by Candlestick when we used to listen to all the music there with Lance, who, you know, Lance was the record rep that we used to kick it with there with on the Hoselli Selly with my homeboy Lance yeah. that Biggie spits on. And uh, I, I loved Little C's. Little C's was one of those coolest motherfuckers that are like, oh, Biggie too was another cool cat. Like, oh, just great. Absolutely. And yeah. when I seen this hypeness on it too, it was more like, what are you, like, it's, I can't see it being so real, I felt like. Right. I, the way you said it like that was so real to, you know, uh, the bullshit behind that comes from the crews too and the fucking we need to now be tougher we need to now be tougher because they say something bullshit that we got to do it's like nah we really don't got to do shit if we just stop it might just stop yeah you know hindsight is always 2020 20. yeah you know what i mean we all did, did done shit 20 something years ago that we probably looked at and be like ah i probably shouldn't have did it that way i could have you know what i mean yeah but Unfortunately, some of us didn't make it. Pac and Big didn't get a chance to make it to correct their mistakes. You know sure. what I mean? We we got a chance to do that. Yeah. You know, so. it's, a, it's a blessing too, man. Tell us some of the uh, artists that you've worked with. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, we know you've worked with Pac, but, um, you know, tell us some of the artists that you've worked with and then, and, and what are you working on right now? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm super blessed in the fact that I've been able to work with everybody that I've always wanted to work with. You know what I mean? In the music industry, all the cats that I was fans of, that I was a fan of, I've got a chance to work with. That's a blessing. You know what I mean? And so, um, that's because you're talented, bro. You got, you got, yeah. you got bars. You know? I'm talented, and and, and 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 my childhood friend is the greatest rapper of all time. So, yeah. You know what I mean? I kind of walk in the in the room with him. Yep. Everywhere I go, and so you know, it makes it a little bit easier, but. That only gets you in the room. Talent keeps you in the room. <laughs> you better believe it. <laughs> that's a real That's talk. big yeah. right there. I love that statement, man. Uh -huh. um, you know, and 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 how many records you feel like you cut with Pac? Approximately. I never, I never counted, man. I never counted. It's a lot. It's a lot. Cause a lot has come out, and it's still. You still got unreleased really shit out. that's hidden. That's like oh, oh yeah, so. it's still shit that hasn't come out yet. Absolutely. You working on a project right now? I'm working on my music. I'm always working on music. You, know you got I mean? a you got a project that's coming though, like something that uh, you want to we could talk yeah, about. Yeah, I'm I'm actually gonna drop two albums on the same day, Damn. with two completely different vibes. Okay. Two and different perspectives. Like what? What do you mean? One hip hop, one fucking opera? What do you mean? <laughs> I know what. Damn, how'd you guess? That'd be so <laughs> dope, dog. If you just start, ah, you know what I mean? Who knows? That'd be great. <laughs> Fuck the whole world. Nah, it's all, it's all hip hop, but it's just two. I, I'm, I'm working on a trilogy. So I have the Hope Dealer, and then I have OG. I've done both those projects kind of like simultaneously, but I just never dropped them together. And so I'm about to drop OG3 and the Hope Dealer 3 on the same day, but two completely different vibes. And all my people out there that fuck with both projects, they know that subject matter wise and how they sound, they're completely different from each other. Mm -hmm. And I'ma just put them out on the same day. Mm. You know, do you know Tiffany uh, Chin? No. 
she's uh, uh, Death Row Cannabis. She's uh, Snoop's girl. She she was at uh, um, the management company. The management company that they, they did. But she was in here earlier today. Okay. We had her on the show. I was just like, you guys really just missed each other, kind of. You know, I mean, it, and it was when they were talking, I was like, damn, we got everybody from Def Rooks coming. And this guy's like, are we bring in the chain. I was like, of course we are. You know what I mean? Because, you know, I know you know JP, right? Yeah. John, you know, I mean, and, and, and John Payne and, and uh -huh. um, you know, and uh, K Dub and everybody else. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Those Shout are, out to Payne and K Dub. My yeah. Peoples. Though, yeah, those are all family, man. We've yeah. known them for many years. And uh, when you walked in, I almost thought you were K Dub for a second. I was like, is that K Dub? for like, my eyes are getting fucking bad. I got to put my glasses on. Who's that brother that just walked in <laughs> with the well, glasses? I take that up. as a compliment because K Dub stay fly. Yeah, yeah, he does. He stay, he, stay fly. Yeah. So I take that as a compliment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's and, a good dude, too. And, and how do you two know each other? When we come back, it's Cannabis Talk 101. We'll be right back after this yes, break. Sir. It's Dime time here at Cannabis Talk 101. We want to thank Dime Industries for an awesome year providing us with the high flavored fruit terpenes, amazing cartridges, dope merchandise. We look forward to an awesome 2023. Check them out in California, Arizona, and Oklahoma. Y'all know what time it is, right? Dime time. That's right. Dime time. Think higher with Dime Industries. Find them in California, Arizona, and Oklahoma. Check out the website, dimeindustries.com, or on IG, dime.industries. And uh, it's so good to have you both in here, brothers. Now, where do you come in the mix? Mr. Fatal in oh, the building. Oh, you put the extra L on You know what I mean? Like Fatal. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you, you, you get in the game. How'd you get to become the good radio personality and start this frenzy broadcasting and all uh, this, this other good stuff? Just being an MC myself. I'm an artist myself. I started as an MC. Where are you from? Uh, L.A., born and raised. Oh, um, really? Yeah, really? for sure. Just got, I started as more of a battle rapper, man. It was inspired by like Eminem when I was younger, and I was just like a troubled teenager, and that was my way to kind of outlive my anger and my... And my issues I had was through music and in an aggressive way. And, uh, you know, I, now I just got, MC means move the crowd, man. So I just got good at like being in front of crowds, talking, and that pretty much is what broadcasting is. And I just fell into it. Um, during the pandemic, everybody had got put in the house. You know, we couldn't go outside. Everybody was stuck to doing podcasts or whatever. So I started a podcast company in Burbank. I had a facility I got access to and I was able to just start a podcast company driven idea and then through that man over the past few years now f fast forward this is a fully for a functional uh, tv production company i'm directing tv shows now with my crew we're filming visual stuff we're doing podcasts um we're also producing original content as well one of the shows i'm producing is, is his show the outlaw show nice. so i brought him on the frenzy network and we he's been really detrimental into seeing the vision with me the whole way and staying solid the whole way as I've been trying to build it and get it going. Instrumental. So, instrumental. Yeah, and detrimental. instrumental. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 that's that weed. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. I, and I, I would have done the same yeah, thing. Yeah. Don't worry. But yeah. Burbank, too, is, you know, people don't know the media capital of the world. Oh, for yeah, we're right by Warner and, and Disney and all that. We're like right Oh, now. you're right down the street there for Power 106. Yeah. Buena Vista and all of us yeah, where I used to work I, at. I work, right there. I work directly with Power 106, too. Some people in New York City and they might disagree with uh oh, that being the media. Oh, right. I'm just yeah. saying, with uh, the bourbon, Edie, I'm saying Edie. the city. Edie. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a, fire, it's like a, a, for, a forest fire up in here. <laughs> hey, dog, y'all about to say you on it's fire over there, literally. Literally, literally. Yeah. it's that gas. That gas lit up. What? what are you doing with Power 106? Tell me. Oh, so I work with them directly. I have a couple contacts from within, and, and for years now, they've been really helping me a lot too with bringing in gas and piggybacking people from being over there to come to my studio and do interviews as well. So. Oh, really? Who are you working with over there? Uh, just Brian. Yeah. I, know, oh, Brian? I, know, I know I know, E Man. I know a lot of people directly. Brian's been there for a long time. Mm -hmm. You remember when he came from San Diego, actually? He's been oh. there, OG, the sales guy, Brian, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly. Shout out to Brian. I know yes, Brian as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. Brian's yeah. been there for years. Uh -huh. Him and Preston. But yeah, I just talked to Preston today. Did you really? Yeah. No yeah. way. I swear. I just, I just tapped in on him. He just literally just texted me right now. That's funny, right? Because you, you, know, you know what's also funny is Brian is uh is who you you actually look at press right there. i haven't read his text yet. oh my god yes Isn't that that's funny great. but uh, Energy. uh brian though is because joe you know joe was at uh, big boys neighborhood right mm -hmm. with power 106 uh it was joe luscious liz fuzzy you know um and yeah that's it, yeah, that was it. fuzzy's a homie too fuzzy's yeah good people. and then uh but but the the funny thing is 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 that uh he he's kind of who introduced us and when i told you remember i said brian was uh uh at the uh, station, uh, the stadium right here, and that's where I ended up meeting you probably the first time. Oh, really? Yeah, at Anaheim Stadium. 
No way. Yeah, yeah. This is when you're a little bald headed. Yeah, I was dug life in it. Wow. You know what I'm I love it's, how it's, it's the outlaw's fault. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you, you had the ball head with the razor, bro? Oh, yeah, for sure. I was swinging out the window for sure. Okay. Yeah, and then after the window, we started walking up on you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, my team's official. But, uh, you know, the, the the good thing, I think, about hip-hop and, and rap and, and, and being through this whole, you know, era is we've learned a lot, you know. And, and um, I think that, you know, hip-hop artists, um, I've seen them all grow myself. I mean, you know, we, we've, I've been on the road. I've been fortunate to be on the road with a lot of different artists and, and uh, kind of see where we've all evolved from. And I, I feel like, you know, some of the, the greats, you know, that, that had to pass for us all to see, um, you know, how ignorant I think we were um, to, to let uh, entertainment turn into, you know, uh, you know and, and it's more than entertainment for, for a lot of people. Don't get it twisted. But, um it, it, it's changed a lot of our lives you know what i mean like you said he's working with little c's in 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 the 90s that would have never happened it was yeah, just that time opposite. yeah they might have tapped in and been like yo like what's going on here and there but you, you you knew that you couldn't do so much you know what i mean because of everything that was happening and and it's unfortunate now it's a blessing that we we all get to you know change that legacy for our our youth and our our people you know that are that are coming up well should be everybody should be able to break bread and make money together yeah, well, yeah I mean, I, I, let's work on projects and it still happens i mean you know unfortunately we've we've just you know had some artists you know uh that were that were lost you know recently even you know um just from you know you know hood shit you know what i mean that, that comes with the uh territory you mm -hmm. know what i mean so tell me tell me about um you know how, how you guys you know ended up meeting how did you guys meet uh i had a show at dash radio that i was doing and he had a show at dash radio and uh I interviewed on his show. He, I interviewed him on my show, vice versa, and then we just kind of clicked right away. We kind of just had a good vibe or whatever. I, I respected who, what he did in his legacy, and, uh, and vice versa. Yeah, we just kind of had a good energy together. And uh, once everything went down, Dash went down too with the pandemic. Everybody was in the house, and then he just trusted the vision with me. We kind of just had a conversation. We had a like-minded goal, and we just been pursuing it, man. He stayed down while I was getting it together. Yeah, man. Shout yeah, out that's to Ski. Doing. I DJ like it. Hey, man, give, give it up for Ski, though. Yeah, Ski is. And he's on and Dash Jay, Radio. Jay loves a homie, all of them. Lisa, all the yeah, definitely. people. Man. You know Shout what? Shout out we, to DJ Ski. Yeah, we were at, we were at uh, Dash. Uh, so we were on 101.5 FM, KOCI, and then we went to Dash. And we we're still on KOCI, but we went over to Dash for, you know, prior, to, you know, this is maybe eight years ago. We were at Dash for like a couple months there. You know, we, we recorded the show out of there. Um, and then uh, we were producing the show and uploading it to the Dash platform. But then uh, shortly after, we ended up uh, being on air with uh, iHeart. So we signed to iHeart and we partnered with iHeart. So uh, shout out to Dash, man. Are, are they, they're still doing their thing. Yeah, right? they moved. You, you went to the Coanga <laughs> location, the, the right? Yeah, down, yeah. The bar. Now they got a sick yeah, the location yeah. at the hotel yeah. Yeah. and shit. Yeah, and yeah. Now they're on another they're on, studio, they're on the boulevard sunset. Now. Yeah, shout out to Dash. Yeah, but I, I just had a, I just wanted to create my own platform, man. Sure. I, got, I got tired of waiting for someone else to make it happen for me or give me an opportunity to monetize what I do. And, and, I, I, and that's kind of what we had the same goal too is, yo, we can get paid to do this. Yeah. And and, and we're not getting money right now from it, so why not? Let's let's put a plan together. Let's execute it. Built him a custom room in our building over there, and uh, he that he had some input on. Brought all the all the memorabilia in, all the all the all the stuff that makes it what he feels is a man cave and his energy. Yeah. And uh, sure, yeah, man, when we, you guys gonna invite us over to get? I think we should make it happen. You got an open invitation, yeah, man. Let's yeah. go. Thank who you. Who do I need to talk to? Yeah, yeah just, you are you talking, right here. Here. talking to him. I, 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 I know you and Joe are busy, man. We'll make it work. I yeah. figured that. I was just checking, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, we've had some Appreciate cool interviews, you, man. man. We've had the Zap Judas of the world. Um, you know. DJ Vlad himself came on to interview with him. Nice. He never does interviews, but he came on to interview with him. Yeah, a lot of cool people, up. man. So, few, yeah. And then yeah. do you guys do you guys do the show together or are you guys you no, separate no, show? He no, produces I, the show for me. It. Okay, it's, nice. It's all so him. He's my producer, but I'm it's one on it's a one on one conversation. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like you just come over to my crib and we just go down in the man cave. Light up some cigars, you know, take a shot and just have real conversation. That's oh, beautiful. you know, I'm a cigar smoker. You just spoke to my hey, heart right now. I, I got, I got a, but watch you, what we you get off. I'm gonna show you. I got like four humidors over there. Where the nice. Cubans at? Where the nice. Cubans? Yeah. Oh I'm man. I'm a cigar appreciator as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's one of those fine things that I love. Where I'm just like, oh, I got to the point though, I was smoking them every day, and oh. sometimes twice a day. Whoa. It's like, yeah. yeah, it was getting a little too much. I had to stop for a minute. Yeah. And then they, yesterday, I had to look uh, half of one. The other day I had a half of one. I'm like, okay, let me just slow down a little yeah. bit. But, you know. but today we'll do it. 
well, today I got to take my son to basketball right now, too. So I'm like, you know what I mean? I got half basketball and football that he's got to go to where, like, I wish I what could. He, what he means is it. his son's going to call him out if he smells it. That's what it is. You know yes. what I mean? Dad, yeah. or better yet, he tells mom, <laughs> Dad smells like cigar. He says, you know how it is. Yeah. Kid, little kid, little nine-year-old kid at home. So <laughs> yapping. Yeah. You just can't no, be smoking well, the cigars all the time. But in the man cave, what's going down? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll smoke one with you guys, though. Okay. Yeah, no, well, you guys will definitely get you in there soon, man. For yeah, sure. we'd love to, man. Yeah. Love to do it. And so how many episodes do you guys have uploaded right now? Uh, we're on the second season. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm yeah. on my second season. Second season. And uh, got got some pretty big interviews coming up. Um, most notably, Deontay Wilder. That one's coming up. Nice. I chop it up with the uh, Bronze Bomber. That's you know what dope. I mean? That's and, dope. And some more. Stay tuned. So it's just basically sit down and you guys just go over, like, you know, who we are. Just what's up. It's just not. Yeah, I'm, no real I'm really life. fascinated by people's journey. Like, what led you to be able to sit across from me yeah and be interviewed by me yeah let's talk about that journey and and you know inspire people inspire the people that watch my show sure i'm big on inspiring people because i think in today's days and times we need a lot more of that yeah people need a reason to get out the bed man you got so many reasons to stay in bed and so i try to give them reasons to get up out the bed and go tackle their fucking goals and live their life to the fullest. I mean, it's kind of like what you're doing now, right? You're doing a show to do that for folks. I mean, you're letting people know, man, yes, I used to rap back then. I used to do this back then. Did a lot of other crazy shit back then. And now I'm doing this and just talking to people. And and I think that's dope. Where can they see it and hear it at? Definitely. You can um, YouTube. You know what I mean? Follow me at the Outlaw Show. Outlaw. The underscore Outlaw underscore show. And uh, the link is in my bio. And then you go you to frenzybroadcasting.com. Go to frenzy. mm-hmm. And then Frenzy Broadcasting on YouTube. We all have the episodes up. And then you guys also put it on air, though. Yeah, it goes on air. Well, yeah, right now I have my, my show, the After Party Show, is an FM syndicated show. So I have okay. the FM side of it with the audio. And then we film my show as well. So I have, like, a couple of different entities to my show. And then for him, we're in the process of getting him on some distribution platforms with his visual stuff. Yeah, after yours is already out there, let's get that one out there, too. We're going to come back. We're going to talk more about this and do the high five with these cats. It's Cannabis Talk 101. We'll be right back after this break. Let's go. Let me smell. Let me smell it. Oh, this is... Oh. You know what it's... this This is how I think. You ready? This is my thought process when I smell this. My thought process says... Fresh. Fresh. It smells... Fresh. We use Loran's Did oils. you just, nah, uh, really? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. bullshit aside, another yeah, fucking yeah. client of yeah. This is great, and I love it. Hold on, I'm gonna try I was one. just gonna say, I I'm wanna try plug Loran too, but that's awesome. Look at this, I'll pop because it smells so good. What color, I, what color did you oh, take? Oh, I don't know, green. How perfect. Green. It's, been yeah. Yeah. it's all Loran's. And <laughs> in San Francisco. Yeah, but let me tell what you. What a compliment the, to Loran oils, dog. Cause they're amazing. Because to really think of all the people and all the different oils, I believe you guys, we smell and look at this shit all the time. That's what we do. We're on this show set, we get product in here. We're not a fucking testing lab, but we're a show set that <laughs> tries things and you know displays things and tells the truth about things. Welcome back to Cannabis Talk 101 with Blue and Joe Grande. Joe Grande just dipped out on me, but he is here in spirit. Dipped yeah. out on us. Yeah, on all of us. Dipped out on us, <laughs> man. Can you believe it? Oh, man, we're going to start some beef. <laughs> hey, that's trust. He said, welcome to my home. I'm leaving. Bye. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what, man? Yeah. It's, it's home, man. You guys got another home here, man. You know What do you guys think of the space, man? I think it's amazing. I was just telling your staff, your crew Pretty here, dope. man. Dope. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, man. You know, I it, it's for us, it, you know, it's it's, it's for kind of eating. Eddie, I mean, what you were saying is, you know, that like, how do you end up here, you know, and and I, I love that when you talk about, you know, your guys is what your story is about and, and how you're you're offering that to bring back more people into your facility and allow them to have a voice on your platform. Mm-hmm. Because it, it, you know, you hit it right on the money, dude. It's like, you know, I, I feel like this whole journey, right? Like I, I, I started out, I, I was from from L.A. too, and I, I'm a, uh, I was rapping and, and I was at, you know, Death Row in the 90s when it was at Can-Am Studios in Tarzana, you know, and, and I remember being in, in and there and then all american studios and all, all the different studios that we ran around and and i was just so young i didn't really know how to you know take the opportunity even that i had you know i was just like just you know amazed that i think i was there you know and but going full circle like i know why i'm here now 
you know, and, and it's like, you know, I've been able to meet all these people and, and work next to them, understand them, understand the culture of hip hop, the culture of cannabis. They all kind of they all kind of merge together. Yeah, for sure. Like if you know about, you know, smoking weed it's probably, you know, at young ages, it, it was one of our you know, best friends. It's our pastime. Yeah, like we just <laughs> smoke. Like who doesn't? Who didn't smoke? You know, and 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 it, and it was just part of the culture. And and I think that people don't realize, you know, like how intimate it is to uh, the minority community. You know, and and I, and I say that because you know, I I like I said, I was very intimate with this plant from the sales side of it to the you know, consumption side of it. Mm -hmm. And then now when you say things like, you know, you get to let, you know, people figure out like, how did you get here? And it's just like, man, I know why we're here. You know what I mean? Like, I, I know exactly why I understand it. I, I could feel the energy. I know that, I know that, that, you know, getting your guys' voice out on our platform will help you guys get your voice out on your platform and vice versa. That's why I'm like, yo, when can I get That's on? Indeed. Because Absolutely. I want to I want to cross promote that. I want to figure out how we can do it more. Absolutely. You know, how we can actually, you know, figure out like there's there's things that, there's so many things I want to ask, you know, but I'll ask like off air. Um, but for an example, like some of them are like, you know, like, do you guys have um uh, you know, decks. Are you guys selling? You know, ad, ad time. Are you yeah. space? Yeah, and of, and of course you are. But but I just want to compare notes. So you know what mm. I mean? Because we're doing the same thing. So let's let's embrace that and figure out how and we can do dope, it better. Man. We need more cross, of that. Cross yeah, brand, cross promote. That, you know what yeah. I mean? Instead of everybody being like, you know, kind of selfish with the with the information or the game, it's like I, I I like to call it. Sure. Like share the game. It should be shared. And is it because it's enough for everybody? It's a potluck. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's enough money for everybody. It's enough audience for everybody. It's enough. There, 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 there really is. Yeah. And and you know what's funny is is when you still see people that don't understand that it it's dumbfounded to me. Yeah, I'm just like, what the fuck? Like you 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 know here's the, and I always use this example in that conversation is how many times have you seen a, a Chevron across the street from Shell? Every day, you know, and they're not at war. <laughs> Right. You know, I mean, maybe their prices fluctuate here and there, and they got a, a little, little bit. You know what and I mean? And then there's a the Valero and a '76 but, in the other corner. Yeah, and, and, and <laughs> but it's not really like a war yeah, though. Yeah. It's, and it's more like, and they're not yeah. like, you can't move over here. You're getting too close to my shit. You're mm -hmm. fucking up my. Mm -hmm. No, no, no one's no one's even thinking on that level. We're thinking that there's plenty of market share for all of us. Let's go out and get it. And that's why, like, when I say that, I, I sincerely mean it. Like, you know, I want to show you guys the decks that we have, let you guys see the, the sponsors that we have the, and how we, we, you know, we set nice. up our infrastructure yeah. and, and how we monetize it from, from the radio show. And, and a lot of people, they, they hear the show and they're like, oh, these guys are just a radio show. But in my mind, I'm like, you have no idea. Like, we have a magazine. We have a radio show. Mm -hmm. We rent the facility out to people. You know, we, um, we're, we're creating a, a television network, which is CTN, Cannabis Talk Network, you know. Um, there, there's just so many different things that we have within our ecosystem that allows us to to be able to sustain ourselves. Mm -hmm. and, and I think you have to share that with with other folks that are doing it because you might say something like, "Yo, we do this," and I'm like, "Damn, I didn't see that that branch." And that branch is that gets to that tree, and that tree is what sprouts that 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 you know uh, that wealth throughout our our legacies. And if we can't help other people do that, then what, what are we really here for? You can't take it with you. Yeah, yeah, so it's it's building that out. And it's just like having those conversations. One conversation can spark and change the world. And and it's and it's and, and it really happens. I mean, it, it, and here's an example, war. Do you know what I mean? All of a sudden we're going to war. Boom, that changes the world. You know what I mean? Right now people are in in in, in Russia and, and and you know, attacking other countries and and it, it's changing the world because yeah. that world that they're at right now the temperature is not good yeah, yeah, yeah the temperature is not good mm -hmm. and so in the same in the same scenario peace you know <laughs> and so in creating and creating a platform like you guys have done I'm, I'm excited to, to hear more of it I, I I haven't dove into it but I'm, I'm going to listen to it sure. dive into it man I'm excited to do it I want to get into the high five guys um, you know, are you guys familiar with the high five is? Yeah, I've seen a couple episodes. I don't know, Edie, you read it? I don't have I, high five. <laughs> yeah, the high oh. five. Yeah, nah, we're about to smoke high yeah. five. Exactly. No, <laughs> Question number one of the high five. How old were you the first time you smoked, and where'd you get it from? Uh, you go first. Nah, you go first. I think I was like 16 years old, and I got it. It was back when it was like 
Arizona was the best weed you could get, AZ, and it was like it was brick, like Strizzy Stress Weed. Yeah. That Reggie Miller, I, like brick it, weed, it, had yeah. the stem, the seeds, and <laughs> it was usually super Bobby Brown, and yeah. yeah. That's why I started growing, smoking on when I started smoking weed, I remember man. that. It's put in a Swisher Sweet or some. To this day, it's probably why I still like Swishers, bro, because I started like smoking like that. Yeah. Um, But yeah, they're hor- horrible weed, bro, but I was, that's how I got it. Some local Lancaster Palmdale. AV, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was about 15, 16 yeah. as well. I had a homeboy, he was already smoking. He was trying to get me to smoke for the longest. But I, I always envisioned myself as an athlete. I played football. Yeah. And so I was like, you know, anti anything that was going to fuck with what, what my, position did you my play? football career. I was on a defensive line. Oh, online. nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And so I didn't, I didn't, you know, I had football dreams. Yeah. I had aspirations. He was like, come on, man, just try it. And so. <laughs> This guy, I don't know, you know, I don't know where he got the idea from, but he twisted up like aluminum foil and made a pipe out of aluminum foil. <laughs> oh my oh, god! Oh yeah, we all did that. You did that too? Of course, I smoked that. Out of, man, I used to just that was my go-to. You just you know, because I could get rid of it, you know, smoke Disposable. it, real quick, put it in my pocket, take it with me, re-roll it. I mean, I'm. <laughs> but here's the thing: he didn't, one of those he didn't have any weed. Oh. Uh, you just pulled the pipe what, out? What he had was a bunch of roaches. Oh, oh nice. He had to break it down. So he broke down all these roaches. So you got really and, high. And packed yeah, that's, that's a, that's a, <laughs> you see where I'm going with that's this, right? Salad. That's a salad. You, you see where I'm really going high. with this. That's a salad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's that's that shit. You get really high. That shit was like, Concentrate. okay. <laughs> what the fuck have the I been f- doing all this time? First yeah. Rosin. Yeah. You're like, yeah, that's the real, that's the, you know, uh, my, my daddy, man, had roaches in his ashtrays, in every ashtray in the house, the car, everything, and I just, you know, when, when and, and normally he'd have weed all through the house too, but there was times where there just was none to be found, he or I couldn't off. tap into it because it was sealed differently. You know what I'm saying? You kind of like, can't go into that one. You hit it. And so I would just take those roaches and do the same shit, and that was sometimes the best high because it was that concentrate. It's like that, you know, hash or that, you know what I mean? It was bomb. Yeah. Question yeah. number two of the high five, what is your favorite way to use or smoke cannabis? Um, they tail. Definitely a, 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 ra- a rap or a blunt for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not too much of a bong or, nah. Yeah. yeah at this no, point no, back, in my no life. backwards. Switchers? Anti-backwards Nah, at this point in my life, I smoke papers mostly. Just a zigzag straight. Papers, yeah. OG. cones, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we call that analog. Is that what they said? Yeah, analog. Yeah, analog. 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 Yeah, everything else is digital now. You know what I'm saying? Digital, there's analog, okay. just old school. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the analog right. way, which way. I like too. It's my favorite way to smoke. Really? To yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I'd rather just smoke in a, into just a joint, you know, and yeah. like I used to smoke blunts and 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 you know different uh, tobaccos, but you know I, I realized it was getting me too high, you know. What it I mean? boosts the it, high. It, huh? it's, it boosts the high big time, you know. And then I was smoking all the fucking time, and uh, I've I've cut back quite a bit now. You know, I'm 44, so I'm I'm kind of just on that. Listen like, to your body now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Plus, you know, I when you know it, it's, I lo- I think the best high in the world is sobriety. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people forget that. You know, when I look back and go, when was mm. I the clearest ever? When I was a kid and I was running around and I had this crazy imagination and my mind would just have this imagination. I think we start to lose that imagination from the drugs, the alcohol, and it starts to get us a little bit less away from our visions and our dreams. And I think the the most wealthy people in the world um, are unrealistic and they have unrealistic cars, they have unrealistic lifestyles and and, and, and that's because of their imagination. And and so, you know, sometimes I, I think cannabis can elevate your imagination 100%, but I think mm-hmm. the overconsumption mm-hmm. for me wasn't allowing me to expand my imagination as much because sometimes I just get stuck on just, I got to get some more weed and smoke, 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 and that mm-hmm. became my whole day and my whole life. So that's mine. But uh, and, and for you, uh, uh, favorite way to use? Oh, you both did it. Craziest way. Question number three of the high five. Craziest way uh, place you've ever used or smoked cannabis? Oh, craziest man. place you ever used or smoked cannabis? Question number three. Damn, craziest. That's a good one. Mm. Damn, bro. Where have I Tours. Smoked? Where have I smoked? Road. Where have I smoked? It's crazy. The craziest place. Wherever I'm at, and, and I'm getting high as. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's pretty fun on a plane. Right to me. That's a good one. Someone, yeah, yeah. That'd be crazy. I've never done that. Like mine was, you know, I mean, like you know, I mean, I've smoked in jail. You I smoked? Sm- <laughs> you smoked in jail? Oh yeah, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. So I walked in. I walked in. The homie was like, "Hey, Holmes, watch the door for me, bro." And I'm like, "All right." And he's sitting on the toilet. Boom, pulled it out and 
you know what I mean? He cleaned, did his thing, and it, it wasn't, you know, it was what it was, and just rolled it up, <laughs> smoked right there. Um, that was pretty crazy for me. I smoked at a court at the L.A. courts, but I, you know how that. I don't know if you've been to L.A. court. I'm sure you guys have. On the don't judge us. Yeah, yeah, you know I'm <laughs> judging you right now. <laughs> you know on that the back they got those stairs that go down the back. You know what I mean? So I hit that stairway and shit and walked out. And then as soon as I came in, there was all kinds of cops there. I was pretty crazy. So when you me. said that, you just fucking triggered a memory. Yeah, that's why I was uh, doing the craziest that. place Rabbit I eating. smoked. Was, it was in school. I, I used to smoke every day in high school. And yeah, me and this chick, I, I, you know what I mean? She would always have some weed, and we go on this one staircase and burn it down right before uh, homeroom. Yes, yeah, that's crazy shit, right? You could have been wrecked. Great days while I was there, you know, because I usually left around one or two. Fatal. Twelve. I think just my daily living is, cr bro. I smoke everywhere. I smoke in front of cops. <laughs> I smoke like I, I, I act like it's Amsterdam everywhere I go. Like just everywhere. Dude, I think the craziest place I've ever smoked is in Utah. As a matter of fact, let's talk. Utah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you, yeah, cause yeah. yeah. So, so some people <laughs> yeah. say like China, you know, yeah. because when you go out there, you you know, if you get caught smoking out there, they, yeah. you know, they'll throw you away for twenty years. It's like you yeah. know, Utah I mean, was looking at me way crazy. They don't care if you're an athlete. For, they don't yeah, care. Crazy yeah. over the trees. Yeah, it's just First crazy. time I went to Dubai. Oh yeah, uh, that's pretty crazy. Uh, Futures DJ was either still locked up or had just got out because he had got caught with weed. Right. And they had him for like damn near 60 days. Yeah. And was trying to keep him. Yeah. They're trying, trying to keep him. Yeah, and, and really if 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 it wasn't Future probably, it, they probably would have. You know what I mean? If it was oh, just yeah. some geek off the street, you yeah. know, like they had to go through exercise to get him. Oh, yeah, you know they had I mean? to get real attorneys and, you know. Oh, I mean? yeah. It's a, it's he would have got deal. lost in the, in the numbers. They'll, just get, they'll leave you there. They yeah. don't They don't give a shit. They don't give a motherfucking shit. Not at all. Question number four of the high five. What is your go-to munchie after you get high? Oh, man. Takis. Takis. Yeah. <laughs> you do that answer quickly. <laughs> Why? Why Takis? I don't like hot Cheetos, bro. I, don't know. I just like spicy shit. Yeah. yeah. You do like hot Cheetos too? Not, not as much. But you no. like the Takis. Yeah. They got a little different crunch yeah, to them, don't they? Sure. Yeah. You like, like Takis? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, I, I don't eat a lot of yeah, not uh, flaming much, hot stuff just yeah. because, you know, I. I the bubble guts, huh? It's got to be something. Yeah, there's got to <laughs> be something too bad for that shit. So I try. I mean, I ate a bunch of dumb shit anyways, but. but you know, I try to stay away from those ones. I like uh, like plain potato chip style, you know, a lot. So, right. you know what I mean? What do you eat? Yeah, I'm like you. Chips, maybe some popcorn, something yeah. like that. Yep. Yeah. Fruit. What kind of chips? <laughs> I like my chips really plain, man. I'm Dude, old school. The, I like ruffles? It. ruffles? Nah, the Lay's. The Lay's. Oh, the Lay's. Ridge, One of the little the yellow, yellow bags. No. Ridge or no Ridge? <laughs> no Ridge. Oh, just that's so boring, bro. Yeah, that's so boring. Yeah, yeah. some French onion, huh? Yeah, that's yeah, better. Barbecue. Onions, yeah. I don't even dip my shit, No, man. just salt. You know just what I mean? Just give me that and, and, you know. No barbecue? No barbecue, no Lay's. Just Lay's. Oh, bro. I like the OGs, too. Lay's and Ruffles are my always go-to. Salt vinegar, bro? All go-to. The only thing is- some salt vinegar every now and then. Yeah, okay. All right. I could do them, but I don't want to go too hard on them. You know what I'm saying? Like I'd rather just go straight chip. The regular chip, I could I could eat plain all day too. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Question number five of the high five: If you smoke, if you could smoke cannabis with anyone, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Oh man, man, it used to be. I used to want to smoke with Rihanna real, Ooh. real bad. Still yeah. pregnant right now? I smoke with her. <laughs> the operative word was I used to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He watched a Super I Bowl used performance to want to smoke and with Rihanna so real used bad, to. man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, man, but shout out to ASAP Rocky, man. You got that off. He man. got it. Yeah. <laughs> pew, pew. I, I salute. Pew, pew, I salute pew, pew. the brother, man. I salute him. Yeah. For me, uh, man, Stevie Nicks, Fleetwood Mac. Wow, why? Because she's a rock star, bro. To me, that was just, that's even bigger than Snoop or someone to me. That's like Willie Nelson iconic or it's like it's yeah. legendary. Yeah, it's big. It's a big deal, and she, man. And she a rock star. I love Fleetwood Mac. Don't get it twisted. Yeah. No, yeah, listen. Um, <laughs> You guys, I you know, I, I first of all I appreciate you guys making the, yeah. the drive out here, coming down. Um, like I said, I do want to compare notes with you guys, yeah. so we can look at what we have, what we're doing. You know, let's carve out appreciate some time that. that we can we can really show each other. You know, what formulas that I know work. You can show me what formulas that working with you guys. Mm -hmm. That way we can expand ourselves. You know, and and our visions. Absolutely. It'd be my pleasure. Yeah, we, absolutely. Really, I look forward to that. Is there anything that we forgot before we let you guys get on out of here, man? That you guys want to bring up, talk about? Make sure you're checking out the after party show. Make sure you check out the Outlaw Show. Yeah. On Frenzy Broadcasting. 
FrenzyBroadcasting.com. Make sure y'all uh, stay tuned. We have a lot of music coming out together also. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, we even got a record with the Outlaws and Gangs to Boo. Rest in peace, Gangs to Boo, the homegirl from 3-6 Mafia. R.I.P. Um, who I interviewed on my show as yeah, well. Interviewed her, sure and that's actually that, how I got to meet her. And I built my own relationship with her. We got her in the studio and got a really organic song from her before her passing, man. And I ended up getting him and, and uh, Young Noble. How, how's she passing? You don't want me to ask um, It was an uh, overdose. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear yeah, that, man. No. That's an accident. We call those accidents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, mm-hmm. I don't think anybody, you know, tries to do that. that yeah, absolutely. Just, absolutely, absolutely an accident. Yeah, you know just accident. she had a lot to live for. Yeah, yeah. no, she was excited. She, she had, her was, comeback was coming. Great music. Yep, yeah, comeback yeah. was coming. You know, female hip hop being so dominant right now was the lane was opening up for her, man. So was was she local? Yeah, she she lived yeah, in, in LA. California. Yep, yeah, LA. Man. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And who was that you said? Gangsta Boo. Gangsta Boo from Triple Six Mafia. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember. I just don't. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to put it together. Where them dollars was another at? One, there was another girl that died out in um, the East Coast or Texas or somewhere else too uh, recently, and and I think it was another accident. But you know, I, I can't. I couldn't remember, so I was just trying to put it all together. But man, listen, thank you guys so much for joining us. And, and Thanks for having us. Man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We, we fucking. I love you Good guys, times. man. Um, we have a platform here. If there's anything we can do to help you guys out, man, we're here with you guys. Uh, and we appreciate you guys, all right? Likewise, man. Thanks. Well, there it is, guys. It's Cannabis Talk 101. And remember this. If no one else loves you, we do.